Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, we will talk about Shopify CLI. CLI is a great development tool for developing Shopify team and Shopify apps. In this video, our focus is Shopify team development. So we will explore some of the feature and how we can use it. Uh, in the previous video, we talked about TeamKit and how we used it to create our first Shopify team. So in this video, CLI. CLI offer a lot of great features. Uh, for example, you can do local development, hot module reloading, or they say hot CSS reloading. And also it can populate product for you. It can populate draft orders for you, which is like a lot of manual work if you do it manually. With all the feature it has, it has some bugs also, which we will find out in this video. They might not call it a bug, but that is a bit annoying for developer. So if you come to the Shopify documentation in the CLI, if you go to the overview, they will say that there is another version for apps. Apps are like extension or plugins for Shopify, but we are not focusing on that. So we will go to installation. If you are on Windows, you can install Ruby installer on your Windows. And then using Gem, you can install Shopify CLI. On Mac OS, you can of course use Gem if you are using the Ruby. Um, Otherwise, if you are um, like, like me who install Homebrew, you can use the brew in like command to install Shopify CLI. After doing that, if you come to the terminal, let this come here. And if you run Shopify hyphen, no hyphen, just like Shopify version, it is going to show you the version of Shopify. But if you run only Shopify, it will print all the comment available in here. One of the cool features is like if you run Shopify and your Shopify is out of date, it will also show a warning that you have to upgrade your Shopify CLI. Now you have access to Shopify CLI. Now Shopify, as I said, has two uh, branch. One is for app, one is for team. So if you run team, then you will have access to all team command. If you run app, you have access to all app commands. So our focus is team, right? So let's before doing running any comments, let's see what are the, some of the options available. So you can come to the core comment, some of the basic comment uh, for uh, this is the core comment that you have for everything. We will go to the team comments. So let's check out some of the team comments that it has. In it will initialize a team for you. So if you run Shopify team in it, give it a name. It will uh, like gen like. Um, clone the default down team from GitHub and it will create a um, clone of that for you in your local development. So um, this option could be passed another team. So if there is another team on GitHub, you can pass that and it will clone that repo for you. So in this video, we will use the down the default one. So let's start like creating our team and how it is going to work. So if I come to terminal in here, I have created a folder called uh, Shopify Teams in my desktop. I'm going to put all the team related stuff in here. So if I remove everything and show you what is inside the folder, there is like the team we created yesterday with TeamKit. But in this video, we will run Shopify Team in it. And the, set, the first parameter is the name. Let's call it custom down. And if you press enter, it is going to clone the down team from GitHub. It was very quick. So let's cd into this custom down and open it in our VS code. I'm not going to read the whole uh, folder structure. It is the same as the other team, but let's see some of the other command that's available. The team serve. Serve will run a local development on a store. So the data come from your store. For example, this is my store and the data is coming from here but it is running that in my local like server something like a local host so this is the uh, ip on local host it will run and the good thing is as soon as i bring a small change i can see the reflection and instead of like if you remember in team kit you have to uh, like push the changes on shopify and then you can see it while in here using cli you can instantly see because everything is in your local machine that is the basic, like that is how development should be and Shopify didn't do it so far. So now CLI is offering that feature. So let's try this Shopify team serve. Now what the reason I'm like doing this step by step is because I want to see if any error happens so I can fix it for you. So let's run the Shopify team. Oops. Serve. 
As soon as you run this command, Shopify say you are not logged in, so you have to pick a store to run this command. So um, you can run the Shopify login store, and then you can paste your store name in here, and it will log in. So you can find that in this um, getting started. There is like a full instruction of how you can log in. But for now, let's grab our store URL in here. So this is the basic command that you run, right? So not the HTTP, just this part of your store, which is the name of your store. Let's paste it in here and run the command. Now it is going to open my browser and ask me to log in. So I will uh, use my email. Authentication was successful. You may close this page. Okay, I close it. When I come back to terminal, it asks me which partner account you want to log in. I have three in here. The second one is a test, which I can I don't know how to delete that, but I am part of it. So I'll pick the right one and it is going to pick this one for me. Now you can clear everything. There is a comment called Shopify. Uh, who am I? If you run this one and you're logging to a store, it will tell you you are logging to this store and this is your organization. So I'm going to clear everything. Now we assume the Shopify team serve should work, right? So let's run it. Once we run the Shopify team serve, it is going to sync our changes into this uh, like code inspired theme that you have in here. Now it is going to take a while to do this one. Before doing, like while it is like syncing my development store in here, let's explore some other comment and let's see if we can find an issue. As I said, it has some issues. So if we go to getting started in here, uh, here are a few things that you have to know, like caution, like this is the main thing that you have to notice, okay? That you cannot use Shopify CLI with development store if you only have a partner staff account access. For example, if I am here, uh, I'm going to go to the setting and from here we have user and permission. If you add an staff, that staff cannot bring any changes despite the fact that he has the full permission. He cannot. You should be the owner of the store. I am the owner in here. So only an owner can bring the changes, like create a, a team in here being a changes. So if you are the store owner, then you need to log in directly from this URL, your shop slash admin. This is something you have to like remember. And when we create this um, store, I told you that you should remember your password. That is the, like, the important. So in here, you have to be logging like this. Otherwise, you cannot use some of the command. For example, if I scroll down, uh, this is the installation, of course. This is where you log in. And this is where you create the theme. And if I scroll down, this is a comment like Shopify populate product. Let's try this one. It should populate some product for us, some like basic, some example products so we can work together on that. Now what it is doing, it is syncing all the file from my team in here. The team, uh, one, one more thing you have to notice is like a development team is hidden. You cannot find it in here. You see, I don't have that team. I only have down. This down is different from what I have in here. So unless you publish it, you will not see it in here. So that is something you should remember. It is always hidden, but you can always access it. If I scroll up a little bit in here, when we run the comment, uh, which was running the organization. Now this is our preview. So if I open it, this is my store. It might ask you for the password, but you have to uh, for the front end password. So here is where you find the password. You go to preferences, scrolling down. This is the password. So you can always change this password. So as soon as I finish, I can just change the password or you can see the, the thing that that is in the front end. But this password is for the front end. You cannot disable it because it is um, protected store. And the thing is like, if you open this in incognito, you will see this password page. You have an HTTPS and you can, unless like you have the password, you cannot see any other thing. So that is the only thing that you have to remember. You have to enter your password. That is called the, uh, I don't know what is the storefront password or something like that. So um, now let's run this comment, as I said. While it is like doing all this theme stuff, I'm going to stop this and let's clear everything. 
at the top we will paste the comment oops I will copy it and let's run the comment now it says you are logging to this so do you want to proceed I'm going to say yes I'm going to proceed and it is going to create some products for me in this store now before recording this video i was like i was recording another video to show you those error but the error consisted a lot so i stopped recording and fixed the error here was the error when i ran this comment of popular product it asked me that you do not have a proper permission this is the thing if i come here you should try doing this doing this now if you get the same error all you have to do is copy this url after the admin log out from here click log out and then you will paste your admin in here using the email address you have to log in you cannot access this using partner dashboard so for example if you're in your partner dashboard you click login you are a staff in here you are not the owner so you have to directly log into this store to be able to access, like access or create all these pro products that you have in here now if i go to the product these are all the product blue water like bullfrog this is just a random product product without an image in the future video i will like uh, add some image but these are the thing you have to understand so i hope this video has been informative and i hope i covered everything and there are some other things that we have to focus which i will create a part two of this video of cli and i will show you some other comment because the video is getting too long i'm not going to continue um, talking in this but i'll show you like uh, for the in the part two we will see what are some other things that we have to focus um thank you for watching i will see you in the next video